Good guy. Bill Broomfield, Mr. President, great to see you. Mr. President, nice to see you. Bill? Nice to see you, Mr. President. Mr. President, hey, how are you? Mr. President, how are you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a statement with regard to this signing here, and for the sound press, I shall read three weeks ago in an address to the Organization of American States, I presented a comprehensive proposal designed to help the peoples of the Caribbean basis cope with a crisis of unprecedented proportions. And today I am transmitting this plan to Congress. The well-being and security of our Caribbean basin neighbors are in our own vital interest. Today, both their economic well-being and security are threatened. Economic disaster is consuming our neighbors' money reserves and credit. It's forcing thousands of people to emigrate and threatening even the most established democracies. Extremist groups and violent minorities are exploiting in this economic misery to gain new footholds in this hemisphere. If we don't act now, the dangers will grow. New Cubas will arise. The cost of ensuring our security to the South will escalate. The plan I'm offering today addresses the underlying concept or the underlying, I should say, economic crisis that offers opportunities to the foes of freedom. Our program, like the crisis itself, is unprecedented and consists of mutually reinforcing measures in the fields of trade, investment, and financial assistance. The package is a balanced one, and every component is essential. It's not foreign aid as usual, but a program that is based on unique American practices that we know work. It will support our neighbors' efforts to achieve economic progress, political democracy, social justice, and freedom from outside intervention. By encouraging a more productive and dynamic private sector, it will develop the jobs, goods, and services which the people of the basin need for a better life. This is our contribution. Others in this hemisphere are also increasing theirs. Our willingness to act boldly has been a catalyst. Earlier this week, Al Haig and Bill Brock met with ministers of Colombia, Mexico, Venezuela, and Canada to discuss programs. These countries are making substantial contributions. Colombia, which is itself a developing country, is increasing trade credits, balance of payment swaps, and technical assistance, and will extend trade preferences. Canada will more than double its assistance. Mexico and Venezuela, in addition to the $700 million a year oil facility, are increasing other programs, including trade preferences. Our countries agreed jointly to ask the Europeans and Japan to pitch in too, and we'll be meeting with them soon. I'm acutely conscious that we ourselves are going through a period of economic difficulty. I wouldn't propose this program if I were not convinced that it is in our vital national interest. The economies of these countries are small. The impact of the trade measures will develop slowly. Every protection available to U.S. industry and labor against disruptive imports will remain. The crisis in the Caribbean Basin is not a partisan issue. I urge the Congress to move with maximum speed. Congress's leadership will be crucial. Our security cannot wait. And now, Deed is done. I want to see you right Well, I wouldn't want to place any interpretation on his implication. We're studying the implications right now, and I'll be better able to. Uh, to answer then, but I would think that his concern 
uh, is unnecessary. We are meeting now, Geneva, temporary recess, but the negotiations are going on to all that we would have to do is, you know, all they would have to do is agree to what we suggested and there would be no nuclear threat left in Europe at all. So what would we do Thank if you. we tried to put missiles in Cuba again? Well, as I say, wait till I read the implications of this. I'm not going to make a... Sir, do you feel comment. that Congress is going to give you a tough time on any foreign aid measure in an election year? Well, I don't think of this as exactly foreign aid. I think we're talking here about an area that is of vital interest to us right here in our own front yard. And it is more a, a case of helping them develop economies that will provide for their people and that will make it no longer necessary for thousands and thousands of them to seek better livelihoods somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you.